the webcam is by far the worst part of this laptop. So I thought I'd start with the webcam and get it out of the way as it only gets better from here. It's the same 720p webcam that's in the previous generations of MacBooks, except now it's processed differently. It looks weird, skin doesn't look right, my hair doesn't look right, nothing really looks and feels right. So I have been using my M1 MacBook Air for several weeks now and I'm absolutely loving it and it really is a fantastic computer. My regular workflow is Microsoft Word, Excel and Safari and this is with the purpose of writing academic essays for university. And this MacBook is an absolute champ at that, it does me perfectly. If you haven't seen my previous video, which was a productivity application test, uh, give it a watch and you'll see how easily this computer flies through this kind of work. So the design keyboard and trackpad are the exact same as the 2020 Intel MacBook Air, which is by no means a bad thing. I have seen that the new M1 MacBook Air is criticized because it's using the same design as the Intel laptop and they wanted a shakeup of the design to match the new processor. I personally think that this design looks really modern and is very great. It's a super durable design, it's very thin and easily packed away into a backpack. One part of this design that I really really dislike is the two USB-C ports. Apple is trying to transition us to a USB-C future, which I strongly believe in is great and it is definitely the future. But only giving us two ports isn't moving us to a future where we have USB-C accessories it's moving us to a future where we have dongles. Take for example, if you wanna charge your laptop, use a USB-C memory stick and a USB-C monitor, this isn't something that this laptop could do by itself unless you had a dongle. So really, four ports is the absolute minimum that should be put on any laptop, in my opinion. So I really do think that the two USB-C ports are gonna age terribly. The keyboard on this laptop is truly amazing. Apple call this a magic keyboard and I maybe wouldn't go as far to say that it's magic but I really do enjoy it. I find it super satisfying to type on. I really find it fun sitting in the library cracking on with work because the keyboard's so nice. I would say this is by far my favourite keyboard ever. You can tap anywhere on the key and it registers the touch even if you tap on the very edge of the key. The trackpad is massive and it's a force touch trackpad which I found really strange at first and I actually didn't like it. Once you've got used to it compared to the previous trackpads, I find it really, really nice and easy to use. Apple have always made exceptional trackpads and this is no exception. And as soon as you get used to it, you're gonna find yourself loving it. So the speakers on this thing are really good. They get loud and for such a thin and light laptop, I think they're really more than good enough. The microphone is surprisingly great, perfect for video calls and recording your voice. So I'm actually recording all of this uh, voice overlay using my M1 MacBook because I think that the microphone on here is better than the microphone that I attach to my camera. Uh, the webcam is a letdown as I mentioned before and this is really something that should be improved in the next generation of model. However, it is acceptable for video calls. I had an assessment center for a job the other day and one of the assessors did actually compliment the video quality of my camera, which I was a bit shocked by and I said that I didn't agree with them. I said this camera is terrible. <laughs> when you think M1 silicon, one of the first things that come to mind is low power consumption. And during the Apple event, Apple said how great their battery life is. However, the main laptop that they discussed was the MacBook Pro. The battery life of the MacBook Air isn't as good as the MacBook Pro, but it's still very good. If you are spending a nine till four day at uni, school, or a coffee shop, and you only really plan on using M1 optimized apps like Safari and Pages, you can easily get away without taking a charger with you. I tend to do a 10 till five day at university and finish with just under 20% battery life and that's not using optimized apps. I've actually killed it much quicker than that though. I downloaded Fortnite onto this computer and in the three or four hours or so it took to download, the battery went from 100% to 7%. 
I personally don't like using a wall plug when I'm out and about. The library that I use doesn't have enough plugs for me to use, or if I'm at a coffee shop, there's probably no choice. So one of the coolest things about this M1 MacBook is that you can actually charge it from a USB-C power bank, and it's really handy and perfect for like when you're going traveling. Not that I'm doing any of that at the moment, but it's perfect for traveling or long days at the library if you don't want to take a power brick with you. Uh, the performance of this is a really great computer. You should check out my productivity task video to see how well it handles these sort of tasks. This laptop absolutely destroys productivity tasks and it doesn't get too hot. It's such a good computer for education like university because the keyboard's so great and it just flies through all of your productivity applications. But if you want to run a game on this, I really don't think this is for you. So it can run Fortnite and Minecraft somewhat smoothly and the frame rate and stuff isn't necessarily the issue. I have an application that allows me to view the temperature of my processor and within five minutes of playing Fortnite the processor was at 100 degrees Celsius which is bonkers and it was starting to feel really hot. This laptop does not have a fan. Apple did demonstrate that the M1 chip could play games quite well and I don't doubt that but this computer has no real way of calling the processor when gaming and it gets physically hot to touch. So if you really want to do light gaming like playing Minecraft or a few lighter games then this computer is fine but if you want to play something a bit more intensive on your computer like Fortnite I do think that you need to at least get a MacBook Pro so you've got a fan to cool it down and this being the base model also only has the 7 core GPU so if you are buying a MacBook Pro you'll also be getting the 8 core GPU so not only will it have a fan to cool it down it will also have slightly better graphics performance when playing games. Who the hell shot him? Man, this game's been crazy. So I have been playing Fortnite for about 11 minutes now and I can really feel the computer heating up and rather weirdly, I'm pretty sure I can smell it getting very hot. So even though it's handling the game kind of well, it's fairly responsive and I'm able to play at a decent frame rate, it's definitely starting to get very warm. It's about 100 degrees, the uh, processor. I'm starting to think that it's starting to smell a little bit. means to one other person. Fuck, you know. What are we watching? Are we watching Ninja or are we watching a MacBook review? I don't know. You tell me. Who's shooting me? I won. How did I win? What? I can't believe I just won that. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I edit all of these videos using Final Cut Pro and they are filmed in 4K resolution. I'm not using really a professional camera, it's recording an MP4 so this is a really easy codec to work with and a better camera would produce larger file sizes and use different more advanced codecs. But for me and hobbyist editing, this computer is fantastic and will fly through any editing task that you've got. This computer flies through a timeline, I'm easily able to slice, view the video at maximum resolution, it very rarely drops frames and it doesn't even get too hot which is really impressive using Final Cut Pro. It stays at a good temperature, it doesn't get hot to touch and it really does fly through video editing. I would say if you wanted to get more serious editing done, again you probably want to go for the MacBook Pro because it's got the fan, but I did buy this computer with the intention of editing all of these videos and it does it really well and I've been really impressed by it and all of my videos are exported in 4K and the export speeds are really really quick. And it does do editing quite well. So if your primary usage is gonna be productivity tasks of Microsoft Word and Excel, and then you also have your hobby tasks, which would be 4K editing and Photoshop usage, this computer could definitely do it, but it's not the computer to choose if you're 
primary tasks are going to be editing or gaming, etc. I feel like it would be wrong to do this review and not mention the few issues that I have had. And it's definitely a few more issues than I had than my Intel computer, let's say. I mentioned in my productivity test that sometimes all of the applications would crash, which is true, sometimes that does happen. And now I've encountered another problem where occasionally the screen goes just purple and then the computer completely restarts. And this isn't whilst doing anything particularly demanding. Uh, it's quite annoying if I'm being honest. It's very, very occasional and obviously I want it to be as reliable as possible. I'm not running the latest Mac OS, I'm going to update it in a moment. So whilst I've owned it, I have updated it to the latest version, but now there is another update. So maybe these are things that will just be improved over time and I don't think it's really a deal breaker because it is very occasional. These may be bugs that other reviewers haven't encountered because they don't use it as their only computer all day, every day. I'm literally on my computer from like 9 a.m. until 9 p.m. doing university work and then doing my hobbies as well, watching videos and editing videos. I don't think that these bugs are a major issue, but I thought I'd point out that they do exist. My final thoughts are that this is a wicked laptop that suits me perfectly and I'm so happy that I own it. Apps are really quick and it's such an exciting computer to be using. It's really responsive. Productivity stuff is great and I'm very, very happy with it. And I love the design and this keyboard is truly amazing. I would say if you're in the market to buy this for something like school or education, this is the perfect computer for you and it will fly through any task that you throw at it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was somewhat informative. Catch you again.